local history, local culture, local events, your community. This is the Joe Kelly Show. Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the show. Frank Tomano is our guest. We're going to be talking, uh, okay, well, we'll take a little trip down memory lane. We'll uh, talk about how Christmas shopping was in downtown Utica way back when, 50s, 60s. But before we do that, we're going to say welcome. Always good yep. to see you, my friend. Yep. Great to be here. Downtown uh, Utica. I always considered downtown. Now, I'd be interested in your <coughs> thought, Frank. I always considered downtown Utica anything from the Stanley Grant's Bookshop down. Well, how did you define downtown uh, Utica? Well, yeah, I, I would guess that, like Munson Williams Proctor North. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're what right. What did I yeah. say, South? I meant North, yeah. uh, uh, going into the uh, busy section there. Right, yeah, the busy uh, corner in the- Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But uh, Grant's, uh, why don't we take a, take a walk down the, uh, this would be the east side of Genesee Street heading north. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Theater, uh, but then uh, a big stop for people who were doing Christmas shopping in Utica way back when would have been Grant's. Yeah, Grant's, uh, Grant's Bookstore, which was on um, Genesee and Hopper, uh, and of course, always a busy place uh, all year round, but especially around Christmas time, because they had a lot of Christmas gifts too, uh, other than uh, other than books. But um, Grant's bookstore was, um, again, always a busy place. They had a little balcony yeah. with the, and then also a basement where you could- Kind of like bargain, bargain, bargain basement books, yeah. yeah. And when I was a kid, before you were a kid, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, um, we used to get our textbooks there. We, you, you could, I think you could rent them like for 10 cents or yeah. something or other. But the, the schools used to send us to Grant's bookstore because if I'm not mistaken, that was the only bookstore in Utica mm. when I was growing up. Later, the Boston store had a, had a book section. Mm -hmm. But Grant's was where everyone went, and they had wonderful Christmas gifts around Christmas time. Yeah, uh, that was a locally owned store. Yeah, I forget his name, but yeah, it was locally owned. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, a, for a long time, it was yeah. there for a long time. Yeah, yeah now it's a key a bank, bank, right? A bank, one yeah. of the banks, yeah. yeah. Uh, when you crossed over Hopper Street, uh, going uh, north, uh, the next thing you would come to was not a shop. That was uh, the uh, uh, Century Club. Well, you had the new Century Club. Yeah. The building is still there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful building, big auditorium. Yeah. That's what yeah. a building. Then you had the Masonic uh, Temple. Mm -hmm. And then you had the, the hobby shop. Yeah. You had uh, the Christian Scientist Reading Room was above in, 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 in the lower floor. You had the hobby shop, which was a small um, a toy shop, yeah. where you could buy unique toys. Yeah. I mean, if you know, you went to the five and dimes for the regular toys, Play World, but the hobby shop had toys you wouldn't find anywhere else. Yeah, you know? I remember they had a lot of uh, magic. Oh yeah, yeah. Magic yeah, gifts. Right. Yeah. And uh, you you walked in the front and you turned to the right to go to the hobby shop. You had yep. to go down like. Right, two or no. three steps, yep. and then on the other side uh, there was a shoe store that I recall. Uh, now it could have changed over the on years. On the same side? Uh, no, or across I, the street. No, uh, on the, right next to the hobby shop. Oh, uh, so you, when you walked into the entrance there of the hobby shop, you went to the right and down a few steps. You were in it the hobby shop. Hand. No, no I forget it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, continuing down, Frank, on uh, Genesee Street. What do we got? Well, you got the my boy sh my boy shop. Yeah. If you remember that, you're bringing. <laughs> yeah. Dragging my memory here now. Yeah, my boys. Shop. Well, my boy shop. Let's uh, uh, stop there for a second. My boy shop. The thing I, of course, upstairs, uh, you had uh, uh, clothes for young people, yeah. uh, young boys. But uh, in the basement, uh, they had everything to do with Boy Scouts. Boy Scouting, yeah. They had the Boy Scout store. Yeah. Uniforms yeah. and awards yeah. and all that kind of stuff. The next store to that, one of the busiest stores all the time, but especially on Christmas, was Sheldon's mm. uh, gift shop. Um, and I'm not exaggerating, sometimes uh, on a Monday night when the shop seems to be open till 9 o'clock, 
you couldn't get in the store, it was so crowded. Mm. You'd open the door and yeah. <laughs> you couldn't get in there. Uh, Sheldon's a gift shop. Would that be Reed Sheldon's? Or? Reed Sheldon's, yeah. I'm sorry, Reed yeah. Sheldon's, yeah. 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 And uh, of course, Nick Sheldon, I remember him from that store, and uh, he moved up to New Hartford Shopping Center for yeah. a while. In fact, when, when uh, they celebrated the 100th anniversary, they were in New Hartford Shopping Center, they mm -hmm. had, they had uh, left downtown. And uh, I decided to interview him. Mm -hmm. And what a nice guy. And I went there yeah. and uh, we spent a couple of hours together. He was telling me about the history of the store, which you know, dated back to the uh, mid 19th century, mm. uh, Reed Sheldon. And, uh, Wasn't Reed Sheldon, Frank, originally farther down on Genesee Street? Wasn't it down like on, uh, you know, um, uh, for some reason, I, I want to say. Uh, you know, I always remember it where it was, but you're right, it could have been, because yeah. many of the stores, J.B. Wells and some, were on Lower Genesee Street mm -hmm. years ago, and then you know, m moved up a couple of blocks. Yeah. You know. uh, next to uh, Reed Sheldon, what would we have, Frank? Well, I think, uh, boy, you're bringing back um, the flower shop? Yeah, Utica Floral. Utica Floral. Yeah, Chris yeah. Brown. It was right on the corner of Bank Place. Yeah, yeah. And Utica Floral was, again, there for decades. Mm -hmm. along. And these stores were busy all the time, but on Christmas, and uh, as you know, on Monday nights mm -hmm. during the Christmas season, the stores would be open at 9 o'clock. And sometimes you couldn't even walk along the sidewalk and yeah. be so crowded. Yeah. You got to remember, downtown Utica, before the malls, was the business, professional, entertainment center of this entire area. Mm -hmm. I mean, cities like Rome and the villages had nice stores, but they didn't have like the Boston store or J.B. Wells, and that attracted a lot of people downtown. And you know, downtown had the, the first run movie theaters, you had bowling alleys, and as you know, you had pool halls. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You a had lot of men's stores. Halls. Uh, Doyle and Orr, I mean, yeah. stores that had been there for decades. Yeah. You, know. you give me a good uh, a segue to mention when you talk about how crowded uh, downtown Utica was back in the day. I'm talking when I remember uh, late 50s uh, is the earliest I can remember. We actually had Boy Scouts out there uh, with the bamboo poles with red yeah. flag at the end of it holding back the crowds. Uh, well, they, to make sure that the crowds obeyed the traffic lights. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you had uh, on the busy corner Genesee and Bleecker, uh, Elizabeth and, uh, and uh, Genesee, Genesee and the Columbia. Yeah. And uh, right, as, as when the lights would turn red, <laughs> they would put down yeah, the pole. And yeah. I guess, w didn't you do that? I did, yeah. yeah. I did it for uh, several years. And then we'd go into Grace Church and warm up. They had, had hot, chocolate nice hot chocolate in there chocolate, for it. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're talking some uh, downtown Utica memories with Frank Tomano. When we come back, we'll talk some more. Short break, right back. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Frank Tomano is our guest. We're talking Christmas shopping in old downtown Utica back in the 50s and 60s. Frank, of course, remembers because he was uh, working for the OD back in those days. Yes, Frank? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I started as a stringer in 1958, mm -hmm. my first byline. Yeah. But in and the 60s and 70s when then you jumped yeah. aboard. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Frank continues to write his... Uh, history column for the uh, OD. Mm -hmm. Frank, the, uh, as we're coming down Genesee Street, um, you cross over a bank, and then you really bank place, and then you really get into the uh, shops. Um, you, I'm trying to think of what, what, come, what came after well, SBU, um, but a lot, um, you lost a lot of them when the st uh, state office building went up. 
Oh yeah, that, that was a busy block. In fact, I, um, in my column, a couple of times I used a photo taken of, uh, from Genesee Street on the east side from Deverell to Blandina. Um, I mean, just packed with stores, cage rollers, and then along Deverell and along Blandina, you had stores, and then all along Charlotte. So that whole block, when they, when they tore that block down for the state office building, uh, really, some of the businesses relocated, but it some, many of them just went, went, went out of business. Let's talk about some of the ones you had in there, Frank. Yeah. You had uh, uh, the Melody Shop. The Melody Shop. Which you've which got to, yeah. Yeah, as you know, I, uh, I always play the piano, and uh, that's where I bought most of my uh, uh, music sheets. Some of the stores, uh, Woolworths, Kresge's, Souls, uh, sheet music, but uh, I just, I don't know, it was Jingle Bells. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which has a local connection, really. Uh, the, uh, the song was written by a man named Johnny Marks, who graduated from Colgate University mm. in 1931. So I imagine he spent some time in downtown yeah. Utica. Yeah. And uh, Johnny Marks, um, uh, his brother-in-law was a Robert Mays, and he worked for Montgomery Wards. And every Christmas time, Montgomery Wards would put out a, um, a coloring book for kids. And uh, Robert Mays was in the advertising department, and he would put that book together. In 1939, he got the idea of a little reindeer with a red nose, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, so he wrote about uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and the kids could color it in. Huge hit. And they were given free to the kids. Huge hit. Well, a couple of years later, his brother-in-law, Johnny Marks, who was a songwriter, and again, a graduate of Colgate, mm -hmm. got the idea, let me, so he wrote Rudolph the Red-Nosed wow. Reindeer. Yep. So we're talking about what year, Frank? Well, 1939, he wrote it for Montgomery Wards. Uh, I don't know, 43, 44, and uh, he recorded it, and it, be it became a hit. But then Gene Autry, oh, the yeah. cowboy yeah, star, yeah, yeah. Um, they wanted him to record it, and he said, well, I, you know, I'm a cowboy singer, but his wife loved the song. Gene Autry <laughs> recorded Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and up until that time, the biggest seller was Bing Crosby's White Christmas. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer came in second. Millions of copies of, of, of uh, Gene Autry's recording. Mm. Of so anyway, there's the local connection, and this is the song sheet mm -hmm. that, uh, that I got at the Melody House. And uh, we're talking about White Christmas. Boy, these are worn out. Yeah. Uh, the song White Christmas came out in 1941 with the movie Holiday Inn. And this is the original song sheet that I bought at the Melody House, I think for a dime. Uh, but it has, you know, Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire and... Um, Who are the women in that, Frank? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm forgetting their names, but I do know, um, because they had hired Bing Crosby, the highest paid singer in, in the movies, and Fred Astaire, the highest paid dancer, they didn't have money for the leading, li <laughs> for, you know, superstars. Yeah. Was it Rosemary Clooney? No, 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 that was in White Christmas. Oh, boy, I'm forgetting her name. Linda. Anyway, they, they were not unknowns, but they were mm -hmm. not famous. But they both did a very, very good job in the movie. Mm -hmm. A few years later, in 1954, by the way, all these songs were written by Irving Berlin. In 1954, they come out with the movie White Christmas with Bing Crosby. Uh, Danny Kaye, Rosemary Clooney, and Vera Allen, mm -hmm. which again was a, was, a, was a big hit. Yeah. Melody, was it the Melody House or the Melody Shop? Melody House. Melody House. Yeah. And that was on... Uh, it, was, it was on the north side of Blandina, almost on Gen where Genesee, mm -hmm. near Genesee. I think it was 6 <clears> Blandina. And it was not only, they sold records, of course, but they sold pianos. And again, a very, very busy place. Yeah. If, you, if you bought a record, 
you wanted to buy a record, you'd go in a booth and play it. If you liked it, you would buy it. Yeah. Uh, and across the street uh, from uh, the Melody House was the Salvation Army. Well, I, th I think Salvation, well, you're right. It was, um, it was a little in the middle of the block. You're right, the yeah. Salvation Army yeah. was. Uh, yeah, they had a big uh, operation there. And then you had uh, Roach and Quinn. Roach and Quinn, which was, again was near uh, near Genesee Street, Kirk's Grill, yeah, uh, Shammy's shoes, shoes. yeah. Uh, I think the Moose Club too. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, downtown Utica was 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 just such a busy place, yeah. and even along Charlotte Street, you know, you had the, the Labor Temple, yeah, uh, but you had the Utica uh, on Deverell, <coughs> Utica Sporting Goods. Mm -hmm. Um, Wasn't Utica Sporting Goods, Frank, originally on Genesee? It was, yeah. And then they moved over to... Then, yeah, right. And again, not only busy uh, all the time, but on Christmas time, again, no shopping malls. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, another thing I was thinking as we were talking, one thing we've lost was window shopping. Yeah. You know, stores used to hire professional window decorators to decorate their store the windows, the Boston store, J.B. Wells, Woolworths, especially around Christmas time. And many people would just, even if they didn't want to buy anything, would just enjoy looking at the decorations in those windows. And I don't think they do that anymore, window shopping. Yeah, well, I know it was in New York City just the other day, and uh, uh, they, they still do it Is there. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, not like it used to be in New York City, but... Uh, yeah. They put a lot of money into those windows. Yeah. <clears throat> when we come back, let's talk. We're down around uh, where the state office building is today, but then you got into the real big uh -huh. stores yeah. uh, a little bit north yeah. of there. Frank Tomatoes, our guest, we're talking about downtown Utica back in the 50s and 60s, Christmas shopping, short break, right back. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Frank Tomano is our guest. Frank is the author of History Just for the Fun of It, very active at the United County History Center, trustee emeritus, and uh, of course continues to write his column for the UOD, which appears every Sunday and online on Saturday. Frank, you mentioned uh, a couple times prior to downtown, prior to the shopping centers, and that's really what ended uh, downtown Utica, yes? Oh sure, yeah, when the, fir the first shopping center, um, downtown always had a problem with parking. For some reason there was never a parking garage. Of course, more, many people took the bus downtown or walked downtown, yeah. <clears throat> but there was always a problem with, uh, with, uh, with parking, not a real serious problem. Later Boston store built its parking garage. But the years I'm talking about, you didn't, so uh, that was always a problem. So. All of a sudden, the first shopping center was the Whitestown Shopping Center, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, free parking, mm -hmm. and then the North Utica Shopping Center opened on Orth Ave, then the Grand Union, and of course, New Hartford, and uh, it just stores. In fact, when I interviewed Nick Sheldon that time on his 100th anniversary, he was in the New Hartford Shopping Center. He said how he regretted leaving downtown. It was a big decision, he said, but. That's where the business was now, yeah. you know, in the shopping centers, and, and, it, and it really killed downtown. I remember, Frank, uh, an issue, and I think I read about it in the OD, where s some of the merchants and employees got blamed because what they would do is they'd uh, put money in the meter and then come out in an hour, put more money in the meter, and they'd hog those uh, well, parking you, you meters. You had parking meters. The original idea of parking meters, you know, you put that people would stay an hour and then move out. But you're right, employees would hog the spaces in yeah. front of the stores. And where else were you going to go? If you, let's say you wanted to go to, the, to uh, Woolworths on Genesee mm -hmm. Street. 
you couldn't find a, you just drive around and around, yeah. you couldn't find a parking space, you get disgusted and just, uh, yeah. and just leave. But during its heyday, it was quite a yeah. place. Yeah. When, uh, let's uh, continue down a little bit, um, you had um, a big department, I mean really a true department store, as you go a little bit more to the north, and that was J.B. Wells. Well, J.B. Wells, yeah, that was a five-story, um, uh, a real department store. Now, um, they did have toys, yeah, they did have toys, but um, uh, it wasn't, the Boston store had everything. But the J.B. Wells was, J.B. Wells was a little bit classier. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, and uh, it had the old, three old-fashioned elevators, but elevator operators. Mm -hmm. Never had automatic uh, elevators. And, uh, and of course, you had your three five and dimes, mm -hmm. Neisner's, Kresge's, and, uh, and Woolworth's. <laughs> uh, bi uh, they, they all had lunch counters, and they were all busy during lunchtime, because at that time, you got to remember, you had thousands of Uticans working downtown. City Hall, uh, the county office building, uh, even before the state office building, you had um, you know, the uh, Utica Mutual Insurance. You had people working downtown, mm -hmm. and at that time, most of them had one hour lunch time, sometimes an hour and a half. And you had time to go out to these little lunch counters, uh, uh, there were big lunch counters at Woolworths, Kresge's mm -hmm. and Nesky. Then later when um, they cut the lunchtime to half hour, most people you know, ate, ate at the office and uh, a lot of things just hurt downtown. Yeah. But, um, when it didn't have the competition of the malls, that was the, that was the place, uh, you know. Yeah, you, you bring back memories with the um, uh, lunch counters, Frank, and I remember the, particularly remember the Woolworths Lunch oh, counter. That oh. was long. That was a big lunch counter. I think they had 105 chairs, the counters. Then they had a few tables, but uh, mm -hmm. it was uh, it was the old-fashioned. Um, uh, you gave your order. I think the kitchen was in the basement, mm -hmm. and it come up, the yeah. come food come up on a dumb waiter. Um, Kresge's. Um, what I what I remember about Kresge's, which also had a busy lunch counter, they had a donut making machine right in one of the center aisles. And when you walked in Kresge's, boy, the <laughs> smell of that dough. <laughs> and it was always busy. I mean, they make the donuts right there in front of you. Yeah. Neisner's was always, um, it had a lunch counter, but not as busy as the other yeah. two. Yeah, the thing about the Woolworths lunch counter that I remember uh, was their uh, ice cream, particularly their banana splits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were known yeah. for their banana splits, yeah. and yeah. they had uh, balloons. And you'd tell the waitress what balloon you wanted mm -hmm. and point to it, she'd pop it. Yeah. And the price that was in there yeah. is the price you paid for yeah. your yeah. banana split. Yeah. So, uh, but the big one, um, in my memory, Frank, of downtown Utica was the Boston oh, store. Oh, sure. Yeah. The Boston store was the big attraction, um, especially when um, they were on Fountain, um, um, Franklin Square for a while. But then when they moved across the street in 1941, they built the five-story Boston store. The building is still there. Uh, R RCIL now, yeah. I think. Um, but again, it had everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, men's clothing, women's clothing, fur coats, uh, and l again, as I said, jewelry. Again, as I said, they had a, uh, a bookstore, a nice bookstore. And they also had the lunch counter. Mm -hmm. uh, wh when I remember, it was downstairs. The Mohawk room, I think they called yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a big a toy, sh a toy, yeah. uh, toy shop. And a Santa Claus. Yeah. You know, one thing about downtown that I remember, th the exteriors were, um, downtown Utica wasn't decorated. Uh, I, I don't remember a big Christmas tree or anything. The stores were decorated, you know, th their, their windows mm -hmm. and everything. And um, they were, uh, I think, I don't remember Woolworths ever having a Santa Claus. Boston Star, J.B. Wells Burgers. Burgers, yeah. But, the, but you're right, the Boston store was the big attraction in the downtown Utica. Yeah. yeah, I do remember, Frank, in later years, Franklin Square had a big Christmas tree and a oh, Santa yeah, you're right. yeah. mailbox, but that you're, was in You're later. right, yes, yeah, Santa's mailbox. And that, those were the years that Sid Oberman was downtown. Yeah, and, and of course, Wicks and Greenman, yeah. before they moved to Genesee, were on, was on Franklin Square. 
Wicks and Greenman at, at Christmas time, I'm not exaggerating, is again, you couldn't get in the store, yeah. it was so crowded. You had to wait, just packed with people. Mm -hmm. um, um, and Wicks and Greenman was on the west side of Genesee. Uh, no, Wicks and Greenman was on the, it was just below Woolworths. All right, I remember when it, it was, it was on Frank. It was on the yeah. west side of Franklin Square. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Then when they moved to Genesee Street, they moved uh, again. Uh, later, Daw Drug. Um, oh yeah. We we forgot Daw Drug. <laughs> we forgot a lot of good things. Know, Frank, yeah. it's always a pleasure having yeah. you come in. Right. Thank Great you. Great to be here, Joe. That's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back next week. We'll do it all again. Don't forget cnyhomepage.com. Lots of good stuff there. Until next time, take care of yourself, everybody.